Hey guys, Doug here. You clicked on this video for one reason. You saw the word vending, vending machine, or vending business. You might have thought about getting into vending, might have thought about it for a long time, but haven't taken the first step. This video is designed to answer a few questions before you ever spend the first dollar in your venture. Vending's been around a long time. People have made a living at it. Um, it's treated me well. It's all I've ever done. Um, I'm in my fifth decade. I've slowed down just a little bit. I'm not on the street as much as I used to, but I am in the shop and uh, we still sell equipment. We sell parts. We service equipment. But vending is not for everybody. People commonly see a $300 machine on the Facebook classifieds or offer up or Craigslist or wherever else. They always ask, is this a good deal? Well, do you need this vending machine? Do you have a location? Do you know what you're buying? A lot of people don't know an imported machine from an American made machine. Imported machines have come a long way and they have gained some ground, but the ground they have not gained is service after the sale. There are no distributors that I know of in the United States that sell parts, that do repair work. Um, and if you ask the salespeople, I've seen them on the, the Facebook posts and in the groups, what about parts? And they say, well, it's only three to five week turnaround time. Well, you know what? When you have that pair of uh, machines in that lunchroom in that little small company with 30 or 40 people and you tell the admin person or the HR person gee you know I've ordered the parts well about the time you say you've ordered the parts they're on the phone looking for another vendor so once again the vending business is for hard-working people it is a combination of blue collar and white collar you have to be a people person if you're grumpy you don't get along well with people after you have 10 or 20 locations, I always tell the people, are you ready to have 10 or 20 bosses, people telling you what to do? Well, that in turn is what happens. So anyways, you thought about vending, you haven't done anything about it yet. I don't mean to discourage anybody, but if you're the kind of guy that has the boat behind the motorhome on Friday afternoon, and at 3.30, right before you're going to leave, you get a call from your best location and the food machine has gotten warm or it's frozen over or there's ice cream melting on the floor. What are you going to do? Are you going to put off that family trip for the weekend? Are you going to leave the next day? I strongly encourage service means everything. My card used to say, service is the name of the game. It is. When you go in and you canvas for a spot, you talk to somebody and they say, gee, we already have a vending company. Well, guess what? 98% of the places that need vending, they already have somebody. Then you ask them, are you happy with your service? And then they might think, well, you know, Bob, it used to be better. The guy doesn't come around as often, you know, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, vending I encourage everybody, it's it's something that probably 99% of the people start with one or two machines. Unless you buy an active business, you're going to lay out 100,000, 200,000, a half a million or more. You're going to start with one or two machines. When I was operating, I always had machines in the shop ready to go. Because when you're out servicing a spot, you might have a guy walk by and says, gee, what company are you with? Those machines are really nice. You know, we'd really like to, to change vendors or get somebody else. Well, if you've got to now go shopping for equipment, you're behind the eight ball already. But if you tell them, gee, it's uh, Thursday afternoon. If we can't get them in tomorrow, we'll certainly be there first thing Monday morning. So I encourage people, do your research on equipment. There are many brands. I encourage you to stick with one or two brands for the simple fact, why carry parts for everything? Do you guys see this parts rack behind me? This goes back 30 feet. 
and it's on both sides that's nothing but spare parts for my customers you don't need to carry that much stuff but you do need to carry the basics you need to have spares are you prepared as your banker already for you to have spare parts I tell people they post in our Facebook groups and I'm gonna put the uh, links below because I think you'll find them very educational we've got a lot of very sharp people there we have people that are veterans 20 30 40 years in the business we also have people that just started like you they have a lot of questions they ask gee is this a good deal it's a it's 300 bucks for some kind of a soda machine and I explained to them that you know you realize that machine costs thirty five hundred dollars new and the cooling unit is probably five hundred it's American made it's either by Dixie Narco Vando maybe Royal it was good enough for the Pepsi and the Coke and the 7-Up and the Dr. Pepper company. It's certainly a, still a good piece of equipment. Now some of this stuff, solid workhorses, but they only sell 11 and a half ounce cans. They don't sell water, they don't sell energy drinks, they're not designed for it. Um, if you're going to get into some of those $2.50 drinks, you want to take $5 bills in your equipment, you need to step up your game. You need to decide, okay, eight to $1,200 is more in our budget for, say, our first soda machine. It's going to last you a long time. You're only buying it for a third of its original value. Um, once again, stick with American-made stuff, guys. If you want to get in the vending business, I recommend you search around a little bit for equipment. If you're going to buy automatic products, They've been around forever. They are out of business. They're still serviced by the Crane Corporation. Um, if you're going to buy National, that's what the big boys buy, Crane National. It's a little bit more pricey, better equipment. They have some drawbacks on some of their models. Most of them I would give an 8.5 to. You have the Wittern Group, USI, same company. USI means you select it. I think they've been around since the 40s. They make an exceptional piece of equipment. Another thing is you're buying or you're shopping for second-hand equipment. Does anybody watching this video that's not in the business yet, does anybody know what ADA means or stands for? This is something we are evolving into. ADA is the American Disabilities Act. People in wheelchairs need to be able to access vending machines just like everything else they need to be able to access a ramp instead of stairs a restroom facility uh, etc but anyways ADA if you're buying these old machines from the 80s and 90s and they're not ADA approved they're technically not legal to operate there's been no enforcement that I know of um, but the ADA Act is a real thing the big companies, I'm not going to mention the franchisees' names, you probably have heard of them. I mean the companies that have an operation in many, many major cities throughout the U.S. They have ADA equipment. That is a huge selling point. If you get past the front door or the front counter of a company that you're maybe going to go solicit, leave a business card to, ask them, can I see your lunchroom? Can I see where the equipment is if you get that far? The first thing you want to have is you want to pull out your little six-foot tape measure out of your pocket and say, do you realize that your machines are not technically even legal to operate? And they'll, their mouth will drop open, their eyes will get real big, and they say, why? What's wrong? What do you mean? You say, well, you see this keypad or this dollar bill acceptor or this credit card reader? It's too high. People in a wheelchair that are seated, they can't reach that 48-inch spot. See this delivery pan or this tray? It's too low. It's got to be 15 inches off the ground. These are a lot of things people that buy equipment, they don't think about. They just go out, they buy the first thing they see that's $200. Then somebody tells them it's maybe made in China. Or maybe it was made in America, but it wasn't that good of a machine. Anyways, guys, this probably has raised a lot of questions. I try and answer as many as I can down below. I am busy. I do work 50 hours a week still, and I enjoy my business. I'll put some valuable links down there. If you have not 
join some of our Facebook groups. I'm very active in those. I'm going to put about three links down there. And uh, I'll try and put up one of these videos weekly. And we're going to cover like this one. This is number one. We're going to cover the people that have not gotten into the vending business. We're going to go all the way down the line. We're going to talk about in-house linked debit card, credit card readers, lunch rooms, um, micro markets. Google that micro market. That's something that the vending business has come to. So, but anyways, in last, what I want to say is most people either work in a place with vending, part of their family, a family member, the dad works in the factory that has vending. Somebody knows somebody that owns a business that would be maybe a potential candidate for your first account. It's pretty simple. After that, I strongly recommend business cards. I also strongly recommend something that most people don't think of, and it's what I'm wearing now, a shirt, a quality shirt. And I don't mean a t-shirt you bought at the boardwalk. You want them to know what you're there for. I have several shirts for all different kinds of meetings. I have different colors. This happens to be my gumball shirt. They know when I go in there, when I'm servicing my bulk route, they know who I am. They know it's not some Joe that's unlocking the machine, taking the money out. I strongly recommend business cards. We'll get into flyers later. I also strongly recommend quality shirts. Just buy a couple of them to start with. Yeah, design and logo, put your name on them. Even if it only says vending service, do something. Spend 35 bucks each for a couple of shirts. This is a Van Heusen that I have on. And people like it. People automatically know you must be from a class act. You're not wearing a t-shirt. You know, the, the t-shirts after a month or two, guys, we all know. I wore them when I was younger. They look worn out. They look crummy. So anyways, guys, appreciate you listening. I am Doug with Doug's World Tour. And I'm out.